Well, good evening from my remote location. This is CL King coming to you live. We always do always come to you live here at Impacting Life 24 seven for the sole purpose of getting it right the first time. That's why we do it live, but I don't not in the studio, obviously. And let me make sure I turn this the right way. <laughs> um, not in the studio, on the road. Man, what a time we have experienced and continue to experience with uh, Chris and Jesus Co. and the band. They just, they're just some phenomenal young people making a joyful noise into the Lord. But they do so much more than noise. They play skillfully. And uh, just the response that we've seen based off of their ministry is just remarkable. And not to mention, another cool part is to be able to see your army son. So, so thankful for, so thankful for that. I also am um, here for, you know, we haven't been able to host the podcast for several weeks because of travel commitments and because of health problems with me. And so I said, well, things are somewhat stable right now. Let's try to see if we can get one down range. And so we'll make this public so everybody can see it. And should you happen to see it and you have a thought about what I'm going to talk about tonight, you are more than welcome to share it. And if you don't have a thought, but you would like to share a thought later on, why don't you email us at info at IL247.com. If you don't want to be on the live, but you would like to have some input and get that to us, just email us at info at IL247.org, not .com. I just got that. So we just got that. So I don't want to mess that up. Email us at info at IL247.org. Now, I want to tell you something that I've looked back through my our podcast since 2019. And I'll just have to be honest with you. I'll be transparent with you that when, when we started this thing back in 2019, I believe that I was far more opinionated in the beginning than I probably have been in recent episodes. You know, trying to dance that fine line between having your opinion and not offending people. And that's never been the intention here to offend anyone. But you know that sometimes can happen. <laughs> that sometimes very well can happen whether you intend to or not. And so sometimes it's just good to um, speak your mind and say what's in your heart and try to do it with compassion and love. And so, you know, I was just looking at some things about what these mass shootings have, greater things that these mass shootings that we're seeing around the country, what they have released or what they have revealed about us as people. They have revealed some things about us as humanity. And I just, like I said, I, I was, I was looking through some old episodes and, you know, we're just constantly trying to find the right guests, the right fit for impact. And I just said, wow, man, that was, I said that pretty aggressively, or I, I made a point that was very resolute and matter of fact. And then I looked at some other episodes where I was kind of like gray on maybe even how I felt about something. But I, I, I have to go back to like 1996, believe this or not, y'all, 1996 was the last time Congress 
pass the budget on time. Did y'all know that? 1996 was the last time Congress worked together to get a budget passed on time. Since then, we have just kicked the can, as you would proverbially hear, kicked the can down the road and watched uh, as we just raise the debt ceiling or pass temporary resolutions to keep the government and the country funded. And I, I think that ties in to my thoughts on what mass shootings are revealing about us as humanity, where we are as a country. I think when I go speak in the jail, I use a whole lot less political correctness because those ladies and gentlemen do not expect me to dance around them. They're there for a reason and I'm there for a reason. They're there for something that they did on the outside. And I'm there to help them prepare to not do that behavior again. So I don't have to sugarcoat what I say to them. I say it in love, obviously, but it doesn't have to be this measured, you know what I mean? It's not a TEDx talk that I give in the jail. So tonight, I don't think I'll do that either. I don't think I, I don't want to offend anybody, but I don't want to give a TEDx talk. I don't want you to say how masterfully I have weaved this discussion. So if you have an opinion and you'd like to put it in the chat box, you're more than welcome to. Uh, you could do that later. You can email us at info at il247.org. And like I said, I am broadcasting, we are broadcasting live from the remote location. We always keep them sometimes clandestine just so we can add mystique to what we're doing. But I believe that the mass shootings have revealed a bigger problem in our country, the current state of our country. I believe that these mass shootings have revealed a bigger, they are a symptom of something bigger in our country. Because if it's been 20 plus years that the folks that, that put signs up around the city, <clears throat> if, if it's been 20 something years that the very people that we send to Washington, D.C., to represent us and to <clears throat> work for the American people. If it's been 20 plus years that those people cannot pass a budget together in the interest of the very people that sent them there to do those things, then these mass shootings are simply revealing how absolutely unequivocally divided our country is. Well, we've got, I've heard it, I've heard it, y'all. Well, we've got more in common. There's more that unites us than divides us. Is that really, do we really believe that? Do we really believe that there's more that unites us than divides us? Because just go, go watch a political debate. Is there really more that unites us than divides us? Do we, do, do we really believe that? If we do, then drive through the various neighborhoods on Sunday morning. And you'll see that everybody's categorized and segmented by their particular pedigree or denomination all supposedly serving the same God. If, if, if we believe that there's more that unites us than divides us, then just listen to the rhetoric when there's a mass shooting. Just listen to it. There's one side that 
inevitably returns to we need some sort of reform to keep weapons out of the hands of those that commit these atrocities. And then the other side says, well, we need more force to deter and or respond to those that would carry out such actions. And neither side in all these mass shootings, neither side has been able to come together and produce anything. Neither side can even come together and have a discussion, have a conversation. You know, in the aviation industry, best as I remember it in the Marine Corps, if there was a plane mishap, if there was a plane crash, if there was a loss of life related to a mishap, we would do what would be called a safety stand down. And in that safety stand down, we would stop flights and review policy and make adjustments accordingly. A safety stand down. But, but do you know that there will be not just one, there will not just be 10, there will be a thousand more mass shootings before we ever can even sit down and discuss it. We immediately say, this is the problem, right? We have purists that say the, 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 the Constitution, the Second Amendment is not supposed to be altered in any way. There should be no infringement. There should be nothing that impedes your right to bear arms. And then the other side says, well, why, 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 why can't we come up with some common sense solutions to address these issues? Like who needs a high capacity magazine or who needs a, 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 AK-47. So these discussions are held in the proverbial corners of the individuals and nothing ever changes. Nothing. I hear them talking in Washington, D.C. now about the debt limit is coming. The, the, the approaching debt limit. And those folks won't do nothing till the 99th hour to pass a continuing resolution, to kick the can down the road for another three or six months, and that'd be okay. Now, if we see this on this, on this level, on the national level, we see this on the United States level. Could we drill down into maybe our individual cities, communities, streets, and say, are we really people that would be willing to sit down and have a discussion and come to a discussion without the preconceived idea that my way is the only way, that my way is right, and that's it. That's all I see out of Washington, D.C. That's all I see out of our political leaders. Is that they run off of these hot button topics that can get them elected. They run off of, off of what their base wants to hear, and then they get elected and then they don't do any of the stuff that got them elected. 
Because it's it's a cat and mouse game. It's this ping ponging off the wall. Well, it's the left. Well, it's the right. Well, it's the left. Well, it's the right. Well, it's the Methodist. No, it's the Baptist. No, it's the Lutheran. No, it's the Presbyterian. And I'm just like, you know, I sit, I sit and I'm and I and I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should just stop speaking in all types, all these different types of places, and just go speak in in jails full time. Because in there, there are there there's not a bunch of this. There's the the waters are not muddied with ideology. Now, I know, and I know some of you on, on both sides of a discussion like this are saying, well, he, well, now, who does he think he, well, here's, here's what I think. I think that we just continue these, these cyclic behaviors. We're okay with accepting them. And then we just, we wait till the next crisis shows up. Right. We 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 wait until the next problem arises. We wait until there's yellow caution tape wrapped around the building. We wait until there's candles and teddy bears and roses thrown in front of a place to create a visual. We a visual. We wait until those times and then we say something needs to be done. And with the rising of the sun and setting of the same, we return back to our hustle and bustle life. You know what I mean? That's why I can never be in politics. I would never, I would never, not for $300 million a year would I be in politics because who can truly be true to their purpose? Right? So you're supposed to come and represent a a diversity of people. You're supposed to come and be the commissioner for everybody. You're supposed to come and be the mayor for the city. But you always come into office with an agenda. You come into the office with the agenda of the people that elected you. The, the, the people that helped you get elected, the people that got you over the top, your base. I don't know if there's anything wrong with that, but I, I'm struggling with this with this idea that we as hum, human beings have lost the art of discussion. We've lost the capacity to say, all right, there's a problem and you have your views, I have my views, can we come and say, all right, we will take a blank piece of paper and try to come to some solution that could help all people, all interested parties? I, I wonder if that's even possible. I wonder if it's possible for us anymore to discuss things and say, hey, listen, man, I don't I don't agree with this. And this is just because of my life experience, et cetera. And I know you don't agree with me. But if we're representing this whole city, how can we, the folks that they brought here, how can we come together together? in a way that reflects the desires of the whole. See, because I, I think about this often, man, I, you know, just, just traversing through the sacred hollowed grounds of Gettysburg yesterday, I, 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 was, I, I thought about, man, the, the struggle of this country and so many different sides pulling to try to get somewhere. And, and, and everybody had their ideology of what was right. The North was right. The South was right. Slavery was right. Right. Everybody had their ideas until, until somebody said, no, 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 no. I'm going to have to put my ideology, my, I won't move for this thinking processes. I'm going to have to put this down for a minute because I, it's not just, I'm not just representing one element of society. 
You know, I think about what 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 Paul talked about. He said, you know, to the weak I became as weak, to the poor and, and so on. Um, and 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 he did that. So he said, man, I, I can't go in and be on my high religious horse on every discussion with somebody. I'll never win anyone. He said, I become all things to all men so that by any means I can save some. <laughs> I'm not going to save all of them, but I will save none of them if I plant my my stake in the ground and say, bless God, this just where it's going to be. And the other side will do the exact same way. The other side of the brain, the other side of the conversation, the panelists, they're just going to come with their own way. And some people say, well, I just won't compromise. Okay. Well, then why don't we have anything in place to address this gun violence? Why don't we have anything in place to, to seriously address mass shootings. You know, when COVID came around, we got serious and everybody was like, man, we need to take the shot or you're gonna lose your job. Take the shot or you get out kick, kicked out the military. Take the shot or you're gonna die, right? We we got, man, we got bulldog serious. Like this is the way it's gotta be. Everybody fall in line or else, or else. But is it, does it, does life have to get to pandemic level occurrences for us as humanity to want to ever work together to improve? Listen, here's here's why I feel, and I told this to my good friend Danny the other day. Here's why I feel that one solution for mass shootings in America will not work one singular solution, one uh, ideological leaning solution won't work, you know? Like the thought process is, let's get the let's get the guns out of the hands of those committing these atrocities. Make them less available in the in the system. And you can go and and peel back the covers of areas that have done that in the US that have strict rigidity in their gun law approaches and crime is sky high. Because at the end of every mass shooting, here's what they say. Here's what they ask. Here's what they look for. At the end of every mass shooting, they search for motive. They search for motive. So you can't legislate motive. You can't put enough roadblocks in place to anticipate motive. You can't screen enough. You can't test enough. You can't prevent enough. to augment motive. I tell those gentlemen and ladies when I go speak to them every single month at the jail, I tell them, hey, listen, it takes a lot to be out here doing what I do. I don't say that to brag. I'm just telling you that it takes a lot of work. I get told no a thousand times a year. I don't want you. We don't need you. Don't need your services. Hey, can we come? No, everybody picks everybody else. All my local friends got other speakers they want besides the guy that's right there with them. It's all good, man. I, that's why I just keep it moving. But it don't take hardly any effort at all to get in there with them. It don't take no, it don't take no effort at all. I, I, in fact, I could end this live and be residing in a jailhouse before midnight. That's how little effort it takes. It takes more effort to go and find the restaurant of your choice in town, in a strange town, like the strange town I'm in. It takes more effort to find something that is palatable to you in dining 
than it would be to get arrested and put in jail. It almost takes mindless effort. Anybody can get thrown in the slammer. But for you to say you could foresee my intent? Really? For you to say you, you motive is post event. I know it's late and some of y'all might watch this later and others of you might just get mad and never talk to me again. I hope you don't. But motive is post event. Let's go. That's just like, you know, we, we work, you know, when you talk about aviation, because, you know, I love and study aviation, been around it my for 30 years almost. You know, you, you look at aviation when a plane crashes, they send the NTSB in to determine why the plane crashed. Now, we're supposed to be doing all of the things, maintenance, and intervals, and checks, and pre-checks, and redundancies, and configurations, and upgrades, and so many different things to prevent a plane from, fly, from crashing. But yet, there are those that will crash in spite of all the things we put in place. I know this is good teaching. I will go back and listen to it myself. They're, they're, the plane will crash regardless of what preventions and interventions you put in place. Well, they don't crash nearly as much as they do. Yeah, that's right. So the one plane crash where the where the wife is left without without a husband or or a husband is left without his kids is is that plane crash insignificant? Just because it only happens one out of a million times in the math that we use? Or is, that, or is that family just as important as the other 20 plane crashes that happened over the last decade? Yeah, that, that family is just as important. Just because the interval may be longer in between doesn't mean that, that, it's, that's, that it's less important. And so when we say, well, we will reduce the amount of mass shootings if we get less guns in the hands of folks. True. You very well may do that. You very well may do that. But you'll never, ever be able to foretell, forecast. You'll never get these profits out here driving these, these $400,000 Maseratis. You'll, it's funny how the profits never can tell that there's a mass shooting coming. They never got a word from the Lord for that. We got a word for, you know, you're supposed to give a million dollar seed. Boy, I know I'm in, I'm in rough cotton tonight. Yeah. And so so the concept is, is that everything with motive is post event. Everything with motive is post event, y'all. And you can't legislate motive. You can't do enough evals to figure out motive because, because like I said, I could be C.L. King, the internationally known speaker, married father of seven and grandfather of seven, and could have nothing on my record, which I don't, and could go out here tonight and commit Harry Carey, and folks will be saying, I wonder why he did that. Notice you had no podcast the last week or two, but man, things must have just been terrible. We're trying to peer into a place that is that is a place that humanity can't get to. You can't get to motive. You can't prevent motive. Now, have we sat down as leaders and had this hard discussion? And then on the flip side of the, of the conversation, is the Second Amendment with, without discussion? Is it without, you know, is it without question? Like, yeah, you have the right to bear arms, but should everybody, 
Should they? Yeah, you have the right to bear arms. But should you bear them with 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 a blank check? You know, I, I was blessed. I believe it was my birthday or Christmas. I can't remember which one. Maybe it was Christmas. With a, a new uh, handgun. And we had to go through some hoops. My wife had to go through some hoops to, to, to surprise me with it. And I had to go downtown and, and give my firstborn to get a permit. And, and, and it was fine. They wanted a psychological thing associated with it. It was fine, fine. I actually appreciated that. Because I don't believe that the Second Amendment is something that's just like, hey, man, every Tom, Dick, and Harry, regardless of what's going on in your life, strap up. I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't, I don't believe that's the intent of it. I, if, if, if you think you're tough and you're going to beat on women, Second Amendment's supposed to cover you and, hey, man, go out and get yourself a, a, a shotgun and a, and, a, and a nine mil. And, 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 and you, you have a proclivity to put your hands on women and, and beat folks? The Second Amendment give you a, a blank check if, if, you, if you're a known pedophile? Is, is, it, is, it, is, it, is there no concern? This is for whosoever. Well, you start digging into that, then you start touching the the sacredness, man. You know what? We we it is. Not, I don't believe it's. I don't believe it's a it's a it's a a thing to make sure that you're responsible <coughs> because the consequences of a firearm, the margins for error. Are very very thin. But we can't sit down and discuss the concepts. We can't sit down and, and have real vigorous discussion about well, this is why I feel this. We can't even listen to the other side who may have an opposing view. They may say, hey, listen. I'm for the Second Amendment. I'm just not for crazy folks and, and folks that have may have a tendency to, to mis, misuse a weapon for, for them being in their hands. We can't even sit down and have a discussion. I've had it on this show twice. We've, we've brought people on. I'm probably going to do it another time. A panel of people saying, hey, man, you know, I, the last one I did was our, you know, how can we keep our schools safe? And my thought process is that the school should be the safest place in our city. The, our greatest commodity is there for seven and a half hours. I have heartburn pulling up on school campuses and seeing kids in single wide or double wide trailers. Why didn't we build these edifices where we could house all of the students up under one roof to reduce them being isolated from the, sh the more hardened walls that are safe inside the main campus, as opposed to a paper thin door and easy access of a trailer? I brought this discussion up and folks have said, well, we, our schools don't need to look like uh, jails compounds and it doesn't represent freedom. If we, if we have my, my thought process is I'm not for 1700 armed guards on the campus, but I am for making sure that we're governing the traffic that comes into the building. I am for, uh, Make, making sure that that uh, that, that y'all don't put in work tickets in your school buildings for a door that won't close right, and 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 access is allowed from the external, 
Yeah, somebody can just bypass the office. See, we have all these things in place for folks that, that obey the rules. You know, we got the camera, you got to check in, put your ID in and all that. We got all that stuff for folks that obey the rules. But what about for the folks that won't? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not even saying that I, I feel like our schools should have, um, you know, armed, retired Vietnam vets at every door and come on, man, that, that, that's not, that's, that's not reality, number one. But who says that the front glass doors couldn't be bulletproof? Who, who said, who's, why is that, why is that so, why is that so, um, you know, we're saying it, we're making it an institutionalized looking facility. Well, it's a learning institution. Last time I checked. Why can't we put the safety grade of every school public for parents to know? Why, why don't we uh, hear the results of the active shooter drills? Because insiders who I know throughout the country educators, et cetera, give me insights on what the active shooter drills are. They're just checks in the box. Have we really made a legitimate attempt at, at weaving the, the, the law enforcement response into the, into the campus so uh, their response teams aren't showing up in the blind, they don't know the layout of the school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Man, it's, it's, it's so much more dynamic than just take all the guns away or give everybody a gun and put them at the front door. But we can't even sit down to discuss it. We can't even sit down and have a discussion about a path forward. We can't even put a temporary Band-Aid on the situation while we work out better solutions. So this has been on my heart for a while, man. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that all these mass shootings are doing is revealing how divided our country is. Because, you know, I looked at from, from the 1980s till, till now, all the mass shootings, you know, 70 plus percent of them were done with handguns. So sometimes we err in isolating one item. Sometimes we err in, in isolating one type. The type model series is not the biggest problem. It's the motive. It's the intent. Because if I'm a legal gun owner, which I am, I'm governed by a set of principles that says, under no circumstances would I ever utilize this, this weapon of force except in this extreme scenario. It would never be used against the innocent. I'm governed by that. So it wouldn't matter if I had a bazooka, if I had a 50 cal, right? It wouldn't matter if I had a Gatling gun. I'm governed by those motives and principles. You could give someone a 22 or a little BB gun, and if their motives and principles are wrong, it don't matter what you do. So then that's the challenge. That's where we have the, that's why we can't get anywhere because the Delta is something that we can't foresee. The Delta is something that's way deeper than an item. Because we always ask ourselves at the end, well, there's still no motive. Well, no kidding. 
So so the motive so so the reason why is because homeboy got let go at at the bank or he got he didn't get his he got fired or, or whatever the case may be. So what what is it now that we can't we can't let people go? Or he got a bad evaluation on his on his work performances. Okay, so now because this could trigger you to go and commit Eric Carey, we can't give out evaluations anymore. Where does it end? I think it's the one of the largest snowballs of our time to try to measure and interpret the next intent and prevent it. Well, we can do better if we have less in their hands. Why isn't that working with crack? Why isn't that working with meth? Can somebody tell me why that's not working with Fentanyl, because it ain't supposed to be in your hands. And I just passed two very, very huge prisons, probably full of folks that have dealt it and used it. And they come in and go out on a cyclic rate. So that's what is revealed to me. The, the mass shootings is just revealed to me that we as a people, we as a country, those that we elect can't sit down and get nothing worked out. The proof is in the pudding. We can't even pass a budget. I ain't done it in 20 plus years. So then you say, well, dog king, what is it, man? Is, it, is that it? Is it all hope lost? Well, man, my faith is still in God. Well, that... That's all you folks ever do after a shooting. You just say, well, we'll pray for them. Programs, systems, processes. They are good for a season. And then humanity finds a way to supplant them, to circumvent them, to overcome them. But my faith is in God, man. And, and, my, and also my faith is in the hope that one day it won't have to be so bad for us to sit down and talk. One day it'll get to a point where we say, man, you know what? I, I know how I feel. I know what my I know what the D or the R is in front of my name. I know that I'm a Baptist or a Presbyterian. But man, I want to hear what you feel. So, what do you feel? How does the United States of America come together on this topic? I'd be interested to know. Feel free to leave a comment or send it to us in an email, which would be info at IL247 dot or I may do a follow-up show tomorrow night on this topic or another very tough topic. But I'll be back tomorrow night, sometime tomorrow night. My schedule's a little hairy, but uh, we'll find a way to get back to you, okay? I'll try to come back around 7, 7.30. All right, have a good night.